What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Spanko and today I'm excited because I'm finally updating one of my favorite decks and that's Kashtira. Now Kashtira of course didn't get affected too much on the most recent ban list. This is kind of like a post ban list, kind of like a post new format deck profile and uh, although it didn't get hit on the ban list, I uh, changed up kind of how it plays right now and how it's built based off the ban list because new decks, new format, new meta, right? So that's why we're updating Kashtira in today's video and I'm super excited because I have a super saucy tech in the extra deck that I want to show you guys. I'm going to be honest, I've been testing it it doesn't when it comes up it's really really good like when it comes up it's really really good it doesn't come up very often but when it does it's really really good so uh i'll get into that when i get to the extra deck but let's get started first things first though make sure to like and subscribe if you guys want to see more of these deck profiles and more content like this one so let's get right into it three unicorn standard you would never not play three unicorn this is the best card in the deck it, it, it's funny because like people always talk about fenrir being so broken and fenrir is broken fenrir is an insane card but in kashira specifically unicorn is the best starter in the deck so three unicorn three fenrir of course no uh no reasons to not play three and uh you're gonna max out on your rise heart as well these are kind of like your consistency slash your starters so you really want to be maxing out on these because rise although rise heart is not as good as oh, these two it's really good if you open it in conjunction with like a theosis or a birth or something like that right so this helps you with like two card combos these are more more like one card combos which is really good and then lastly for the names we're just playing one ogre and one scarecrow kashtira this is pretty standard no matter what format you're playing um in terms of kashtira lineup this is kind of what you want to be playing uh this card is just so insane against so many decks uh, and people can't play around this really so one on one is all you need and then of course you're playing three uh, uh raid soth raid soth is the most important card in the deck as long as you have this card at three and like all your starters at three you're going to be maxing out on them so one terraforming of course three theosis three birth and then one of the preparations i'm just gonna go through this fast because let's be honest if you guys have ever played kashira before this is the lineup you're always gonna be playing i've actually seen people play three rise heart and two theosis or three theosis and two rise heart don't do that like that's that's don't do that this is this is your consistency especially with uh something that people don't consider right now is prosperity going to one the deck used to be playing three prosperity you don't have three prosperity anymore so you need to be playing three and three because you need to see your consistency right so that's why we're maxing out on this and the nice thing with ogre and preparations is if you i think this card is insane because it's like backup for birth because a lot of the time your opponents are going to want to try to hit this if you're able to set this it's kind of like a backup for birth but then on top of that the really nice thing about this is really easy side out target as well right that's it for the kashira cards i don't think i need to explain more than that it's pretty standard they're the most broken cards in the in the deck of course but the actual most broken card in the deck is right here uh three shifter shifter sell three as long as you're um as long as this card's at three you play three um the reason this deck is still so viable is because of this card it's just a win condition that uh, a lot of decks don't have and a lot of decks can't play around so three to shifter of course is a staple in my opinion this should be kishir dimensional shifter at this point because how broken it is so three shifter three ash three imperm um this is pretty standard in um kishira because these are the hand traps that don't go to the graveyard and don't need to go to the graveyard because uh i don't like when you're under shifter and then you have like veiler in hand for example because uh, i don't know people do it i don't like it i don't like playing nibiru either i know nibiru is popular because nibiru makes it so that if you nib your opponent if you can't get rid of that nibiru then you're kind of stuck and you can't summon a kishira right unless you have something like birth which i don't like either so i want to avoid all those inconsistency issues and we're just playing all the good cards here so three ash three imperm playing two Molcharmy, two mourner two bell and the reason we're playing two two and two actually funny enough is uh first of all i actually only have two of this i would be playing three i only have two though so yeah but the reason we're playing two and two and we're not playing like a bestial or not playing the other card there's another card that i'm thinking of but i'm not the reason i'm not playing them is because this doesn't need to go to the graveyard this doesn't need to go to the graveyard this doesn't need to go to the graveyard all of them just need to be discarded so that's kind of what i was talking about earlier because you open this and this together you open this and this together you open this and this together it's perfectly fine these are all viable this is also pretty good this format it's an underrated card this format well it's not the strongest oh the card that i was thinking of was ogre so ogre for example funny enough needs to go to the graveyard ogre is really good this format but the reason i'm not playing it is because it needs to go to the graveyard something like bell something like mourner doesn't and mourner effectively is just effect bailer so that's why i, I like playing uh, this lineup over here and i like the two two and two because i'm doing something funny here we're playing one called by of course but we're also playing one cross out it's funny you guys might be wondering why are you playing a one random cross out the logic behind one cross out is one we lost prosperity by the way we're playing one prosperity okay just just over there okay cool no um, the logic behind the one cross out is that um, because you lost prosperity, you need filler spots, but also because you lost prosperity, you lost a little bit of consistency. So for that reason, having cross out for more, like these are very popular hand traps, right? Right here. Not so much Bell, and Bell doesn't really hurt this deck, but one, two, three, four, these cards are all popular hand traps. 
and they all hurt this deck. Specifically, this one also really hurts this deck a lot too. So um, Crossout is like one of those things where it's like a second call by for you. It's really good in, uh, against these hand traps and it makes your deck a little bit more consistent in that you don't lose to these hand traps anymore. Crossout is really good. Also, it's a good side out target if you see your opponents not playing hand traps and they're playing more like board breakers, like especially against the Tempai builds, you just side it out. So it's a good side out target. For the extra deck though, this is kind of what I want to talk about because the extra deck I think is um, really saucy here. This is standards, one Shangri Euro, one red eyes, uh, one big eye, this card right here, Blaze Supreme Ruler of uh, the All Dragons. So this card is kind of cool. I don't like it so much in cash because you need to pop a card to pop another card. It's not like a great card in itself, but it does come up in tandem with this. So I know a lot of people, I used to be on uh, the um, Decode Heat Soul package, but I, I'm not playing the Heat Soul package anymore because I think this package is kind of cool. When you're going second, right? The thing is with this deck is it's really a powerful deck, but it's the ceiling of the deck is not that high. The, the floor is really high, but the ceiling is really low. And what I mean by that is it doesn't put up multiple negates like Ubel does or Fiendsmith and all or like Snake Eye. It doesn't do that kind of stuff, right? So what you want to do if you're forced to go second is it kind of helps you break a lot of boards. So this one with this you're most likely popping three cards and then you're able to go into F0 and then you're going into uh, Draco Future over here. Now, why would you ever do this? Well, there are scenarios where you can't OTK your opponent. And so if you're just able to clear their board, set it up where it's a very simplified game state, and then you're setting up your own negate. On top of that, you might have your own hand traps as well. That's just more than enough a lot of the time to win the games. And this has come up multiple times where it's kind of like, listen, I broke your board. I wasn't able to OTK you. I'm going to slap an F0 or like a Utopia uh, Draco Future. It's going to act as a negate. It's going to act as a smash seal. Very, very powerful card. And that's what this deck doesn't do. This deck doesn't set up negates. This is going to set it up for you again it doesn't come up super super often but when it does it's insane then we're playing one draco sack even without the link package i'm still playing this because it's good for sp and whatnot we're playing the one zeus the one typhon um pretty standard i think these cards are all pretty good this format um so i like playing these then for the link monsters we're playing one sp one ip one unicorn and one access code again cards you don't go into super often but i still like playing them because when they do come up they can be very powerful sp is really easy to make as well in this deck which is nice the reason i cut the heat soul package is because i felt like there was never a time I really wanted to go into it. You lose to Nib, you lose to Hand Trap, you lose to so many different things where I was like, you know what? If I can just do this going second, it's just better for me. And even if I'm locked into Ixies, it doesn't take me away from this package. And then lastly, we're playing one of the Chengying. Now, Chengying is obviously really good because your deck banishes a lot of cards, both on your card, your cards, but your opponent's cards as well. And so you can set this up to kind of push for game. Because I'm playing so many of the level three Hand Traps, you can just normal summon it with a Fenrir or Unicorn or something like that, make this, and then um, you're good to OTK. So this is just kind of like an OTK button for you, just another big body that you can summon. I and mean, it's not a bad card either. It kind of like does what Baron used to do because Baron used to be that level 10. We don't have Baron anymore. This is kind of this kind of nice. It's like the OG Kashira, but instead of Baron, you're playing an OTK button now. Lastly, for the side deck, I like to say this with all my deck profiles, side decks are always going to be up to fresh preference. It's just a skeleton for you guys to use. But um, I personally like the side deck a lot because it kind of covers a little bit of everything. So three Lava Golem, I think Lava Golem is mandatory in this deck. You don't need your normal summon in this deck. And then this kind of breaks the Ubel boards, breaks the Snake Eye boards. So it's really important in that sense. Then we're playing two Thrust, one Talents, one Harpies, and two Lightning Storm. Um, the reason we're playing this package is because in, in the matchups where hand traps aren't as good, for example, like if Tempai is setting up, uh, if you make Tempai go first and they have like summoning and stuff, you can't do anything, or just some, some matchups, these are just a little bit better. I just side these in instead. This is actually really good to side in going first as well, because um, some matchups, this card is a game winner, right? So if you're going first and you know D Barrier is good into your Tempai matchups, into whatever you're going to see, right? That this is good. Branded as well. Branded is getting, uh, picking up in popularity. Um, some of the Runic matchups as well, you can call Fusion, which is really good. So I like to side thrust in going first as well because you can thrust into this, which is really nice. So effectively, you're paying five copies of uh, D Barrier going first, and uh, it's really nice in that sense. And then lastly, three Solemn Judgment. This card, the reason I'm playing it is because Kashira unfortunately loses to the most simple of things. It loses to evenly matched. It loses to Raigeki. It loses to Lightning Storm. It loses to so many different board breakers, and Tempai is playing a lot of board breakers. A lot of decks now are actually choosing to play board breakers over hand traps, and so I'm liking the Solemn Judgment. Now, the other card I really wanted to play I couldn't fit was Defissure. Defissure is more like of an anti-meta card. It's more of a stun card. Going first, you activate Defissure. It, it's just so good when you get it through. However, I just thought that that's more gimmicky and a little bit more fun. I wanted to be, I wanted to cover all my bases, right? And so the Solemn Judgment covers all my bases. But I will say that again, it's always going to be up to preference. If you you don't want to play the thrust package and you just want to play like kind of back row hate and then these three cards could be d fisher that's another option for you there's just so many options and it's, it's so unlimited this side deck like how you want to build it i just think this card is too good not to play this card is too good not to play and this is just going first especially into games two and three you need this right because you don't want to lose to a ragaki literally 
something as simple as our reggae you could lose to right so uh but that's it thank you guys all for watching that's the deck profile 40 cards in the main deck i showed you guys the side deck i showed you guys the extra deck but again i think this deck is still very very powerful it's funny because i've been preaching this deck for so long and people were saying oh cash is dead it's it's a rogue deck blah 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 and i think two regionals back to back it one of them won it won and then one of them it came like second there was like a second place and a fourth place finish so Cash is still a good deck. And as long as Shifter's around, this deck is live. And it's one of my favorite decks. And I'm excited to be playing it in today's format. But thank you guys all for watching. I appreciate every single one of you. Make sure to like and subscribe. I want to say a big shout out to Cameraman. He's not feeling good today. He's kind of sick. But he, he wanted to do this for me anyway. So I appreciate you. I'm going to look at you in the eye now. I appreciate you. Thank you guys all for watching. I appreciate every single one of you. With that, Spanko signing out. Peace.